Hello guys, my name's Dylan and welcome back to another Life Stories Reddit video. I read some of the comments on the last video and everything makes sense so I've purchased a new microphone, I no longer have a cold and uh, hopefully everything will be better moving forward. Without further ado, let's jump into some stories from the subreddit Tales from the Squad Car. I hope you enjoy. Officer, Tales from a Flashlight Cop It's a rare day for me. For one, I'm working the day shift. Two, I'm working in a vehicle this time. It's a brutally hot day in mid-July. All things considered, it's relatively quiet for how packed the city has been recently. With this in mind, I planned on sitting quietly in my car with the aircon blasting and finishing the latest episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia while avoiding all human contact. Due to the male redneck version of the mythical Karen, this was not to be. Central to any unit near the beach of Pond Avenue. Nope, not today, Satan. I waited, hoping to hear any unit nearby pick it up. I needed to see if Rickety Cricket could turn his life around after finding his dad. Central to any unit near the beach of Pond Avenue. Reference disorderly subject. Damn it, Cricket would have to wait. Baker 12 to Central, go ahead. 12, respond to the beach of Pond for a disorderly subject. Lifeguards are calling about a subject who refuses to take his tent down. I hate everyone. 10-4 en route. My city has a pretty big lake that becomes a tourist destination in the summer. People flock from all over to go swimming in the detrius and the filth that accumulates there. With this in mind, the city hires lifeguards to protect their tourists who bring in so much money. The downside is a lot of rules to follow that are designed to keep everyone safe. One of those is city tents ordinances. The ordinance basically states that you can't have over large tents or canopies up. This is to help with overcrowding, it also preserves the lifeguard's ability to see the water. To combat this, the city has a designated lifeguard who goes around to enforce the ordinances. Unfortunately, his lack of people skills often ensures people argue with him. Hence my being called. Baker 12, show me on the scene. 10, 4, 12. I walk myself up to the waiting lifeguard, doing my best to hide my annoyed expression. Howdy, Paul. I got a call saying you needed us? Yeah, Nick. I talked to that guy over there. His tent is blocking the lifeguard's view of the water, and is in general too big to even be on the beach. I looked over at the group in question. It was a gentleman with a stained work t-shirt you'd see on your average building contractor, some beat-up jeans and boots. He was also with what I presumed was his wife and child. Got it, I'll go and have a talk with them. How much trouble did they give? He was just rude in general and he said he wouldn't take his tent down at all. I sighed inwardly. Understood, I'll be right back. I walked over to the couple in question. Howdy guys, I'm Officer Slice with the tired of this bull police department. I understand you don't want to take your tent down? The woman responded. That's right, our daughter is in this tent and we want to keep her protected from the sun. I completely understand that, your child's safety becomes before anything else. Unfortunately, due to city ordinance, you will have to take this down. Can I suggest you get a few umbrellas from the gentleman renting them out over there? Or city also has offers for free tents specifically for infants that you can keep her in. The husband decides it's time to butt in. That's complete bull, who decides the tent's too big? Well sir, the city ordinance is anything bigger than 48 by 48. I can tell just by looking at your tent that it's too large. I'm 6 foot 4 and it comes to my shoulders. Is that how you measure it? I'm not taking it down until you get a tape measure. I pause for a second here, extremely grateful that they couldn't see my eyes rolling behind my sunglasses. No sir, it's coming down now. If I measure it when it's outside of the limits, I'll be forced to sight you. Right now you can take it down and we'll all go on with our day. Remember you can get a free tent to borrow from a lifeguard. Fine, we'll take it down. Thanks for ruining our day. Yes, sir. You take care now. I walked away and nodded to Paul, indicating it was taken care of. Baker 12 to Central Show. One warning given for a tent violation. I didn't bother to hide my sarcasm over the radio this time. 10 4 12. Based on the attitude of the gentleman, I decided to check back in a bit. Hopefully he'd listen, get a replacement and take it down. Failing that, I'd be nearby to take care of it before another call came in, which would mean another report I'd have to do. About 20 minutes later, I rolled back up. 
A visibly frustrated Paul was watching them laze about in the tent, while people did their best to navigate all the way around all the space they took up. Evidently, someone didn't like warnings. Baker 12 to Central, sigh. Show me on a pedestrian stop times 2. Central 12, go ahead. Fuzz subject, black male, grey t-shirt, blue jeans, yellow work boots. Second subject, white female, white t-shirt, grey athletic shorts and no shoes. 10 4, 12. Be advised this is in reference to the tent violation from earlier. God, I hated saying this over the radio. I walked back up to the couple. Hey, Yal, we spoke earlier about the tent. Do you still intend to take it down? The wife responds. We're just going to keep it up. I'll take the ticket. Mum, I don't want to give you a ticket. Husband jumps in again. Show us where it says we can't have this tent. So you walked past a sign with an exact picture of the tent saying it isn't allowed. The exact ordinance is City Ordinance 1932B Tent Ordinances. Well, we're keeping it up. I paused again to take a deep breath. The pettiness of this situation was beginning to annoy me. All right, I said in a cheery voice. Who does the tent belong to? The wife responds it's hers. Okay, mum, I'll need your ID, please. Why? Because I'm going to issue you a citation. You'd have thought I'd kicked her baby based on the husband's response. She didn't have an ID on her, but I can work around that one easily generally. It was tougher in this case since the peanut gallery <laughs> interfered with every step. He responded to basic questions like what is your address with things like we have none sir, we live in our car. We played the annoying game of me asking for information with him chiming in while his wife talked over him giving the required information. This continued on to the point where I tried to step to his wife to get the final bits of information and he interposed himself in between us. Sir, move so I can finish this up. You don't need to talk to her. Kind of do. Move so we can figure this out or you'll be going to jail for disorderly conduct. Nah, you don't need to talk to her. F this. Baker 12 to Central, start me an additional unit. Immediately, I heard one of my best friends respond. Baker 19, I'm on route to 12. This was followed by Central asking me, Baker 12, are you good? Is the situation escalating from attempt violation? 12 to Central, he's good. He's just... Will you be quiet when I'm on the radio? We're good. Just a tantrum. Baker 19 arrives on the scene and talks to the husband whilst I finish the citation up. I had a hard time not laughing as the husband dealt with my very much less patient friend. Let me pause to add, I love my friend to death. He's loyal to a fault and will always back his friends, especially when he thinks someone is coming at someone he cares about unjustly. This is important because of how I deal with people. I try my best to be patient with people and give a break. This sometimes results in people mistaking my kindness for weakness. He doesn't tolerate people when they try and pull one over on me. The husband states to my stony friend, so we're going to keep this tent up after this ticket. Fine, you can, but I guarantee my partner is going to write you a citation for every five minutes you keep this tent up after. He tried to be polite, but you took advantage of him. You don't have anything better to do? Nope. They took the tent down. Ultimately, we got the ticket written with nobody having to go to jail. The only casualty was me getting at least one grey hair from that conversation. Baker 12 to Central. One citation issued. All units are 10-8. 10, 10 4, 12 the situation ended up with the husband walking by me and yelling, You're a blooming flashlight cop, dude. Flashlight cop. What batteries did they give you for those? These? Normally I ignore the hecklers, but for once I called back from my squad. No sir, I got double A's after getting promoted. Have a safe day. I love that one. It makes being a cop sound both like a terrible time, but also a great time. Very good. State Trooper, one stop, two tickets. I don't know what the reason is, but I stop a lot of people driving who don't have a driver's license when there's a licensed driver in the car with them. Maybe they think they're the full guy and saving other people from getting tickets. I stop someone for a lane change violation, cutting off someone else on the freeway. I contacted the driver who told me his license was suspended, but the passenger had a license. It was also the passenger's car. I asked the passenger, why did you let someone who you know doesn't have a driving license drive your car? We weren't going that far and he usually drives so I didn't think about it. I went back to my car, wrote the tickets and walked back up. 
the driver got a ticket for the unsafe lane change and driving while suspended. I addressed the passenger. Mom, your car can be impounded for him driving it, but since you're in the car with a license, I'm going to let you drive it away. However, you're also getting a ticket. It's illegal for you to knowingly allow someone who doesn't have a license to drive your car. What? She didn't like that. The driver did. Honey, calm down. He could be impounding the car right now. This is way better. She signed her ticket. Maybe she learned a lesson. See, in Germany, that's a felony, and that would get them up to a year in jail, both of them. Well, I'm glad they're not in uh, Germany, at least for their sake, anyway. State Trooper. Don't make us look bad. Super vague story because it's oddly specific otherwise. Some of my co-workers were called to a scene involving a well-known monument. There was a girl, woman about 20 years old, committing a crime there. Long story short, she got away even with helicopters in the area. It wasn't a big deal except that the media got hold of it and it spread across the state with some national coverage. The crime she committed would have earned her maybe a couple of weeks in jail and a couple of years in probation, and as far as crime goes, it was minor. The problem was that she made us look bad. That meant that our top investigators going after murderers and vehicle fefferings and gun runners were pulled off their current cases to find this girl. Straight from the top, find her and make it public that we found her. About a week after the event, I was working shift and dispatch called me to meet up with an undercover guy. He was parked at a nearby location and I went to the location and couldn't find him. I drove around in circles a few times and never found him. A moment later, dispatch let me know that he called in to say I drove right by his car. Oh, I didn't know we had those as undercover cars and you the reader don't get to know either. I stopped at a local gas station and he came up to me instead. He gave me a quick rundown. They knew the girl was at a nearby hotel and they knew which room she was in. We had a few avenues to get in. Voluntary compliance was our hope, but she had to be out by 3pm. After that, the manager could legally open the door for us and we didn't have to wait for a search warrant for the hotel room. There was four or five other undercover guys around as well. She wasn't expected to be a threat, so we'd show up, knock on the door, let her know that we had a warrant for her arrest. Cool, good plan. Why do you need me? Because I was in a uniform. People don't like a bunch of scruffy guys all wearing black with no insigma running around with guns in public because that looks like black helicopter stuff more than police activity. So we went to the hotel, knocked on the door, told her we had a warrant for her arrest and she needed to come out. No. We did this for about 30 minutes. Voluntary compliance wasn't happening, but it just passed 3pm. The hotel manager showed up and opened the door for us. After a quick room clearing, I, the guy in the uniform, put her in the cuffs. As I was securing her, I could see on her arm a fresh tattoo of the monument she just committed the crime at. It seemed to be a source of pride for her. I booked her into jail based on the warrant. She asked, how did you guys find me? Easy. You made us look bad, so we made you a priority. The alternative reply could have been, how did you find me? We got an anonymous tip from a tattoo parlour. Suspect. It's just flower, I swear. Let me set the stage. This was 1999 and I was a young, fairly tanned white dude that had been told that I looked Hispanic on more than one occasion. I was driving a chrome and white Mazda MX-6 along a major US highway in southern Alabama. I also had a pistol in the trunk, legally purchased with a permit. I'll admit I had a pretty bad lead foot at the time. I was speeding, no big surprise there, 72 and a 55. There were two county sheriff deputies in one car that stopped me. They had decided to do a search and I mentioned the pistol and they cuffed me and had me sit on the shoulder. A few minutes later, sir, we found a suspicious white powder on your floorboard. Internally, ah oh, hell, here we go again. Well, I got groceries the other day, the flour might have leaked out. It was obvious that they didn't believe me, so they called for a K9 unit. Whilst waiting for the dog, they decided I wasn't a flight risk and removed the cuffs. At some point, they noticed my edgy bumper sticker. A picture of a gun with the words, Don't bother running, you'll only die tired. One of the deputies fell into full-blown fits of laughter and asked if I had any military training. No sir, unless you count a single semester of ROTC at LSU. We then shot the breeze about guns until the dog got there. The dog freaking signalled somehow. Everything got real bloomin' tense again 
until the officer tested the powder and found out that it was indeed just flour. Sorry, new dog, here's your speeding ticket and you're free to go. Sigh. Look at the ticket, it's a warning, and a note. Go Tigers, slow the F down next time. Thanks, random county sheriff. Suspect, I'm an idiot. So about 10 minutes ago I pulled up to what at first looked like a car wreck. Multiple deputies, EMS and a car on each side of the road. So I slowed down and stopped expecting to have to back up. I waited about 2 or 3 minutes until it dawned on me it was a roadblock. Of course they figured out I was drunk. When asked if I'd been drinking I said the truth. No, I'm just stupid. Still had to get out and do a field sobriety test. And the shocking results are, I'm just an idiot. To be honest, I have sympathy for the guy because as soon as people see blue lights, a lot of the time their IQ drops to minus 10 anyway. Um, I was pulled over recently and uh, I, uh, everything just left my brain like I stopped working. I didn't do anything wrong, um, it was just a routine stop but I freaked out. 